and welcome to Jakarta, Indonesia, here for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. France taking on Latvia in Group H action. It is game day two for this group. And Latvia with a big opening win against Lebanon. Historic win, actually, their first ever win at a FIBA Basketball World Cup. Shona Thorburn alongside Mark Clark bringing you tonight's action. You said people had to step up for uh, Latvia, and one of them was Roland Schmitz, and boy, did he step up. Wow, I mean, Roland Schmitz, much talked about since he was a young man, but on a world stage, he, you know, he's an established pro now, but he did everything. Three-point line, took it to the bucket, turnaround jumpers, defensively he was strong, and they're gonna need him tonight because the inside strength and power of France, he has got to stand up and really lead Latvia in playing defense on that size of lineup and that athleticism that France has, albeit they didn't show us that in game one. No, they didn't, but Coach Luca Banci has this team playing incredibly well for Latvia. And we saw it during the qualifiers. They went on an 11-game winning streak, and they beat good teams on the way to qualifying for this FIBA World Cup. Well, you say good teams, you know, Serbia. Greece, you don't have to go any bigger than those two in terms of uh, European basketball. And it's the way they did it. And it's the way they, the game they brought the other day, they brought team with a capital T, moved the ball, shot 60% from the three point line, which is phenomenal at their ball movement. I'm not <laughs> confident that this French team coming out now can pick themselves up and work hard enough for 24 seconds every possession to take away those open looks. Well, why do they have to pick themselves up? Because they lost to Canada on game day one, and they didn't just lose. They got thumped by 30, 65 to 95 to a very, very talented Canada team. We saw them beat Lebanon earlier today, but I mean, the way it was going talent against experience, and you thought at some point in that second half, the experience of this French team would come out. You know, you have a Fournier, you have a Nicolas Batum, you have Nando Di Colo. Let's not forget the rim protector in Rudy Gobert. And they just didn't show up. No, they didn't show up. That's the only way to describe it. In that second half, they were just a shadow of what a French national team normally is. And that was the most disappointing thing for me. Yeah, you can have bad nights offensively. Yeah, you know, your field goal percentages can dip. What can't dip is your defensive effort and, and your effort overall. They just lay down in that fourth quarter and just let Canada give it to them. Yeah, and they gave it to them by 30. But if there's a coach that knows what to do, one of the winning, most winningest coaches in this tournament, Vincent Collet, maybe compared to Spain's Scariolo, no? I mean, they're oh, almost yeah. on the same page. So that is it. Earlier today, Canada with a big win over Lebanon with a record 44 assists, 73 to 28, 128. We have Latvia taking on France. And there you see it, Canada soundly in first. Latvia 1-0, Lebanon 0-2, France looking for their first win in this tournament. And we will take a quick pause for the playings of the national anthem. If you're able, we now invite you to stand for the national anthems. We begin with the anthem of Latvia.
please remain standing for the national anthem of France. Well, the handshakes, the smiles from the players and the coaching staff. And soon we will have the third team on the floor tonight. Obviously, these players, they played with each other. They played against each other. And that is the third team on the floor calling tonight's game. Crew chief in the middle, Julio Anaya, Juan Fernandez, and Andres Bartel are going to be calling tonight's game. Well, first off, Latvia, boy, did they shoot the ball well against Lebanon. And I think it's something that they're going to have to do again here tonight. Obviously, we have the Bertans brothers. Uh, how good was the captain, uh, Dairis Bertans? Excuse me for my accent there. 15 minutes, 20 points. Well, he got the job done, didn't then sat down. I mean, it's an ideal, <laughs> <coughs> ideal scenario. Get a look at the starting lineup. And it's pretty much the same. It, you look, you got to look at the backcourt as well for me, like Zagars and Kurks and you know, they, they did a really, really nice job at controlling tempo. This team want the ball to move. They really do handle it quite well. Grazulis is, what, is the blue collar guy that just picks up the rebounds and really does work for the group. Darius, you just mentioned, Bertan did a marvelous job. Six from seven from three. Let's just say that. That's yeah. all you need to know. <laughs> and he also dished out four assists with his 20 points. He just had a superb night. But him and his brother have been like a bit of a talismanic guys. Before Paul Zingas became the superstar he is. And uh, Roland Smith's picked up every piece of slack. Not having Lomas here as well doesn't help Latvia, but they didn't miss him at all because he went seven from seven from two. 17 points personal with seven rebounds. And again, Van Manny, Manchi was Manning's up and able to manage his minutes in that time as well. I've got to, before we get into anything else, is, you know, Luca Manki is, is just a great coach, you know that, but atmosphere show, they've got to comment it before we look at France. Thousands of Latvians, fancy <laughs> dress, they've got everything going here. Massive flags. I don't know who's left in Latvia, they're all here. <laughs> it is a small country, and now let's go and talk about France. Well, Evan Fournier, he had that great first half. 19 points, if I'm not mistaken. Only two points in the second half, though. He needs more contribution. They can't rely on him. He played the entire first half against Canada. They were only trailing by three. As we see the starting lineup, we have Nicolas Batum, uh, Yabusele, Fournier, Decola, and Gobert. So, you, you shot away. maybe we'll see Vincent Collet go to the bench a little bit earlier? Well, I think it's amazing. We raised it during the game. They, they did not rotate in the first half, bar one or two small-time rotations. And then it, he had nowhere to go in the second half. He had tired legs on the floor. Fournier had an, a great first half. Shot the ball really well. Couldn't make a thing in the second half. And then where does he go now? Is that just a mistake by Collet? Or is it the fact he doesn't believe he's got depth? You look at his lineup, he's got players with real pedigree on that bench. Didn't really get into it. The soul was one of the few guys that came off the bench and really made a contribution. You know, 12 points against Canada, five from six on the floor. If there's a real target for me for France, is they have to get inside touches, whether that is for bear himself or penetration before they do anything else. They just got nothing really going on the inside enough times against uh, Canada the other night. 
Well, you saw Vincent Collet. We talked a little bit about him. I mean, he has World Cup medals. He has Olympic medals. He has coached some of the best teams in Europe. He has been the head coach of this French team for a very long time. As you see all the Latvian fans, I really would love to know how many thousands of them wow. are here because the lower ball bowl is all Latvia. Absolutely all Latvia, and as I say, and it's, the great thing about Latvian crowd is one, they're passionate, two, they're knowledgeable. They know really when to get after this. Last game, B Lebanon, 18 from 35 from the three-point line. 51%, it's, and that dipped as the game went down. They, when the game was sharp and, and the game was being competitive, they just did not miss. And there was just a superb performances. Five of their last six World Cup games against European teams, uh, France have won. It's a nice stat, but well, the only one that really matters for them is what happens in this game against this European team after they've had <laughs> a massive loss. The first time Canada were able to beat a European team, and it's that's what they've got to rebound from. Well, we'll talk more about it as the game gets going, I'm sure. But if you're France, even if you get a win, if Latvia somehow ends up beating Canada, you don't want it to come down to a three-way tie with a 30-point loss. Absolutely right. There's only, I think, unless they really do come out with a perfect performance and Latvia can't buy a basket, points difference is not going to be France's friend in any three-way tie. Well, we are just about a minute to tip off as you see the Tiso countdown clock there. You mentioned him quickly. I thought uh, um, off the bench, the best production that France had was Matthias Nassau, who joined the team late. He met them up here because he was coming back from an injury and definitely a bright spot. And I hope someone that uh, Vincent Collet goes to early in this game if necessary. Again, I think, you know, at a level where you have a game every other day, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta rely on your bench. And you have to also have confidence in your bench. And I think, you know, as this tournament moves on, some of the best teams in the tournament are usually ones who can go deep into their bench. Absolutely right. It's, it's tournament play is about 12 player roster. Well, good evening and welcome to Jakarta, Indonesia, here for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. It is France taking on Latvia as France wins the jump ball. Fournier now using a screen by Gobert. They have Batum open. And his three-point shot is good, and that's a good sign because he didn't shoot the ball, I think, against Canada until uh, the second half. That's right. Fourth quarter, maybe. Yeah, it looked really sweet on the, on the, on the timing, everything. Zagas, Grazulis, and there's going to be an off-ball whistle, I believe. Yep, so a holding foul, foul away from the ball is going to go against that man, Evan Fournier. Zagas throws it up. Go bear. Nice read. Not sure you can really alley oop the ball. Penetration kick. Extra passes to Colo. Nice pump fake. And maybe too many passes for France as Latvia now. They have numbers. Schmitz, you said it. He needed a big game and he had a big game. He stepped up. And how about that? Bertans. Well, but, that, yeah. He is now seven of eight in this tournament yeah. from three-point range. Both made threes off the fact that teams had to help, and they found the open guy almost like for like type plays. You cannot rotate away from these shooters. Zucolo and another off-ball foul is going to be called in this game. So that's already the second one against each team. And uh, Shona, I'm like. Um, we haven't seen those types of calls no. being made. I was just about to say, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and you know, obviously referees scout. You know, they do look at stuff, and, and people holding shooters and holding off ball would have been something they would probably talked about before the game. It's interesting they make those calls. 
Gobert gets it, and he's fouled. I think they're going to say he was going up and will be shooting two. Yep, so it's going to be two shots for Rudy Gobert. And we mentioned it quickly before the game started. I think they got to go to him earlier, and they, they got to get him more touches. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it does, Lavia will switch. He's got a size advantage on everybody. They just have to be patient and get a good angle for France. He really does need to have a lot of touches. And the other thing that, in the, even in that one, it forced the double team. And if he doesn't have an option, he can kick it to an open shooter. He's got to get touches. The ball needs to touch the paint for France. And Gobert goes two for two from the free throw line. And France there switching the off-ball situation. They find the hot hand. And why not? Off the front of the rim. Latvian fans want to foul. Schmidt's there with the offensive rebound and put back though. Yeah, but they made they made him take it off the dribble. They made him take a shot he wasn't really set for, but Schmidt just cleaned up the mess. Great finish. I think we're in for a nice game. <laughs> well, I mean, almost a must-win game for France. Yeah, that's well. Wait, almost. Kind of, wait, Another kind of turnover. Play. Yeah. It's amazing. Almost a must-win for Latvia too. Bertrand uh, rolls in and out as the fans were already on their feet before he even released that ball. So two turnovers now already in this game for France. Yabusele lets it fly and that shot is good. And they're so concerned about uh, Rudy Gobert now underneath that you're going to see them help off. And if France starts hitting their threes. As Batum picks up the rebound. Ducolo, no good. Zagas pitching the tempo. Schmitz now gets the ball underneath. And great footwork and patience by him. It's a tough, that's tough. The way he used the basket to protect it on the far side of the ring, super little move. Gobert finds Fournier. Fournier, little fadeaway jump shot's good. I like the way France are looking inside, looking for touches, whether it's Gobert or anybody. I think it's, it's much more aggressive than they were game day one. Schmitz. Bertrand. And that's going to be a turnover, so nice defensive possession there by France. France is just that little bit more comfortable. Not a lot, just enough than they were against Canada with Canada's quickness and ball pressure. And it's enabling them to just be more productive with the way they move the ball. Fournier. Oh, dump in down low, and how about that? And one by Yabusele. And Lafia just not ready to defend the out of bounds play. That, that's all it was. Well. Nice unselfish play there by Fournier. And a three point play opportunity. I mean, I'll try and explain this a little bit more, but this is a very European type game there's enough time to run your what you want to run without really being taken out of it that people will switch and they'll make you do different things but you're still in control of how you're trying to run france were never in control against canada zagas passes no good picked up by gobert who's leading the break and he kicks it out to batum batum finds fournier fournier three-point shot is good and france are feeling it early, and they look different. They do look different. Well, they're coming up with things out of their defense as well. Bertrand's, oh, nice little hesitation as he gets Yabusele to stand up and blows right by him. So great read there by the shooter. They go inside, mismatch underneath. Batum finds Fournier. 
And it's going to be a moving street screen going as Rudy Gobert. Well, I was going to say when you make when you asked the question about the number of calls, they've made that they've made the statement that the officials that's how they're going to call the game. Well, that moving pick straight on it, and uh, the normal scenarios of players was okay to referee in this way today, so that's how we're going to have to play. Well, we saw France get into a little bit of foul trouble yeah. in that first half against Canada as well. Oh yeah, I mean Piccolo had the quick two, but you know. Cole stayed with him, got him back in the game as well. They, they sort of rolled the dice on that. Smith. Well, Roland nice action. Rollins is a great player. Roland Smith is a basketball player. Great touch, great decision. Nicolo, well defended. Oh, why reach? Move your feet, Kurix. Got excited, didn't he? Kurix? Yeah, he did, because it was really good defense. Yeah. It's always like, I got you. I got you. I now won the ball now. I won the ball. Fournier. Tough, tough penetration, takes the contact, and a nice finish by him. As he he looked good yesterday, sorry, game day one against Canada in the first half. Kurix, three-point shot off the mark. France did a really nice job of making that we try and make shots out of dribble, trying to make shots out of their own actions as opposed to the way they move the ball game day one. They've had, I think, one, the Bertrands made the first three. That's the only standstill real yeah. open look they've had. And that's about French defense, and it's, it's, it's interesting. Francesco's, Francesco's in the game as well, really quick, in the game early. And nice turnover, almost a turnover. And they're going to say a foul is actually going to go against Batum. I'm okay with that. I think that there was there, there was a little bit of I'm gonna stop you. But well, he has to call it because it's he a has to, yeah. he has to call it. Because they would have had the ball for sure, right? And I think that's why you didn't see a reaction out of uh, Nikola yeah. Batum either. He knew like wasn't on purpose, but yeah, you gotta call that against me. Zorix. Grazulis. Oh nice! <laughs> Easy two-point basket. I mean, that's what happens when you get out and you try and defend and deny, right? Yeah, that's that's a great read because they did they wanted to chase. Great pass, great read. Still got to execute it. But how, how do you? Fournier, tough, tough shot. Does no good, but he's going to go to the free throw line. How do you think about this? So we see Sylvain Francisco check into the game. He only played in the last quarter when, you know, the game was already a blowout, and he had a pretty good, you know, outing. Seven minutes, uh, five points, hit a couple shots, picked up a couple steals, and Cole has already gone to him. Yeah, and I think this is one of the benefits of all the World Cup qualifiers and, and, and all those things, because with the different lineups of French, Francisco played a lot of time in, in some of those uh, qualifiers and really is quick and was really effective defensively as much as anything else. And I think, you know, Cole's, he's, a, he's, he's obviously an experienced coach. He's obviously really successful. He knows he needs to be better defensively and quicker to make, as we said earlier on, make this uh, Latvian lineup with the ball on the floor. Francisco's one of those guys who can do that. Maybe defensively better than Nando De Colo would be able to, even though Nando De Colo is a, is a far better offense, complete offensive player. You know, Cole knows how to win, so he's, he's, he, if, that's how he's gonna, if that's what he needs to do, he's going to do it. Well, we see him going to his bench earlier than he did against that Canada game as France now 20 to 13, three and a half minutes left in the first quarter. So the same thing about Terry Tape, he's, he's, he's hardly played as well. Yep. You know, Zorix, Schmitz, oh, <laughs> how good is he? Wow. And that was, I mean, Tarpe was there. He had a hand up. Yeah, being Roland Smith is not a surprise to people, but 
Wow, he's played at a level over these last two games. Fournier goes inside to Gobert, and they're going to call a foul. So the refs are, uh, they're blowing the whistle tonight. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, oh, I was more expecting this type of officiating than, than the officiating we've had in the first, uh, you know, two and a half days of uh, action here in Jakarta. It's, uh, the trouble is, it is the first time it's been like this, so the players have seen it another way. I, I haven't seen a problem with any of the calls. No, me neither. And, you know, I think as a, as a player, you know, you have to adjust. You see how the referees uh, are going to ref the game in the first few minutes, and, and you have to be able to adjust. It's, you know, like the, the way the America Cup is a referee compared to over in Asia Cup is very different. And, you know, obviously the, the referees here, they have camps before they come into this tournament, and this is what they're told. You know, these are the points of emphasis, and they share those points of emphasis with the teams. So a box out foul. Yeah, they called the foul on uh, Corux. You have a silly, he's a guy, he's a tough guy to keep off the glass. Let's just put it that way. He's a great athlete. Uh, a little bit of foul trouble for Lapia here as you see uh, Rodinho's Corux go to the bench. He has two fouls along with the captain, uh, Dyrus Bertans. He has two fouls and Arthur Corux, number 47, has two fouls. And it's always, there's always going to be that point where one team's going to go, well, we've got a real rough end of it. At the moment, Latvia are getting the rough end of it. But usually uh, evens it, itself out that is over the, the course of the game. That is the standard phrase, we'll say <laughs> that. Yabusili yeah, misses that one, and Latvia now. Zorix. Zorix has the ball for about 20 seconds of that possession and finds the other Bertrand Davis. NBA player for Lapia. Yabusele turns it over and ball is going to go back to Lapia. That's how you play help defense. That's how you rotate out of it. The help came early, but then, but Bertans didn't then stay, and well, he rotated, and the whole of that was on the move defensively, and they get the steal. You know, early help, rotation, you're scrambling. It's, that was impressive. They got to say that's got to be every possession. Gobert's going to have to go 30 minutes here. I think. Well, I think uh, Mustafa Fall is on the. Oh, how about that roll in? <laughs> Davis Bertrand knocks down that shot. He had a good game the other day as well, shooting 86% from three-point range. Is he the squad, right? They call him the ace, no? But, you know, you, you've scouted this team. I mean, I'm sure Colet watched all of their 11 wins in the qualifications. Yeah. Heading into this tournament, everyone knew that Latvia were a big three-point shooting team. Yeah, yeah. The trouble is you know that, and then you've got to be, you, you, <laughs> or you, you're not going to ever stop them shooting it. You've got to get them down from 50 to 40, right. from 45 to 35. And the other thing you have to do is you have to rebound the hell out of it. And it's not just, you know, it's not just the bigs because you're talking three-point shots. You're often talking long rebounds. One to five, you have to box out. Well, another foul going against Lapia is going to put Yabusene on the free throw line. in for France. Zorix. And nice 
kick by Francisco. He heads it, he gets it back. Fournier, though, the shooter, feet set, and it's good. As Latvia want to talk about it, and coach Luca Banchi calls a timeout. Got to know where shooters are. Well, it's, it's tough in transition, as you saw. Four Latvian defenders just got drawn to the ball because it was in transition. And one of the best point three, three point shooters here in the World Cup just knocked it down. Again, aggressive play by France. Francisco's defense started that. Tremendous pass to Nile. Had the chance to Watch run. Out. Let's listen to Banky. If they go zone and zone press, we have to attack. Okay? Attack. Here. If they zone, if they zone, the first offense is a Raggy, Raggy Giro. Okay? If not, we go. Raggy Sano scrape. Okay? So we scrape. Means that here is Badu. We sleep, we kick ahead, we cut, and AP, we scrape, five to four. Well, a couple Fournier highlights as he has come out on a mission. 12 points already for that man right there. As Latvia coming out of the timeout, and how about that 8-0 run in 46 seconds? Yep. <laughs> you know, tied it at 19. And Francisco's defense is already becoming a factor. He is so quick. Latvia taking their time. It's a possible four-point play as Mustafa Fall just is going to get called for the foul, and you got to let shooters land. Wow, how about that shot? And they switch. They, they have been switching everything, France, but Mustafa Fall can't guard him when he gets the ball. He just got caught on his heels after switching. This is all bad. Bertrand's needed to see. It's him on his heels, he's gone. No way was he going to recover. And that's the way to break an 8-0 run, have a four-point play. As Pashniks is in the game. He didn't play a lot of minutes, and people asked in the press conference after the game, you know, is he healthy? Fournier has been feeling it. Ooh, nice tip-out rebound there by Tarpe. He gets it back, feet set, and that <laughs> shot is good. Why not? Why not? As Davis Bertrand is feeling it as well. And uh, Latvia now back in that zone. You heard it in the timeout that they were going to go zone. Fournier, shot clock, game clock, I should say. Tough, tough shot. He gets it up, and it's good. <laughs> As he is going to put France up 33 to 26 after 10. How about that? Wow, spectacular first quarter for France, and especially for that man, Evan Fournier at the buzzer. Well, Latvia, they played well. But it's hard to stop a player like him. France leading 33 to 26. Well, there's going to be a lot of best plays that are involving people getting their feet to, to shoot the ball. And uh, it doesn't matter who you are in a white uniform when you've got your feet set in that first uh, quarter, you knock down shots. But let's not forget, they started pretty well for uh, Fournier in particular in the first half the other night. But the difference tonight has been their defense. You know, they've been in passing lanes, 
Latvia have had to work hard to get looks. They've had to come off screens that much harder. Roland Smith has had to really work hard for his points. And it's it's been a French turnaround in terms of their defensive effort. The rotations of Cole with Francisco getting in the game very early. And it's worked for him. Tapic coming in the game really early. He's gone for that defensive quickness to try and generate his offense. What he really needs now, and he really needs, must have a foul to give him minutes as hard as he can for three or four minutes so that Gorbea can get enough of rotation. He cannot be on his heels as he was with the Bertans three. And it's, it's about the French bench as much as anything else. Collet's decision to rotate, that's why he feels Bonson Collet. Well, scan that QR code and download your courtside 1891 app, stream, schedule, scores, highlights. Follow the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Latvia now with the ball to start the second quarter. Zorix. Now they're switching. Uh, every time uh, Davis Bertrand sets the screen. Oh! A little bit too high. Shot clock, though. They got to get it up. Are they aware? They are aware. Oh, goodness me. He almost made that. See, and that's the thing about switching. Yeah, you get real big mismatches. But how often have they had to try and make that pass? Have they looked at that pass? OK, they should have made it. But when you switch and you're aggressive, you're being taken out of what you want to run. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a Bonson Cole decision that's being really a fact, real factor here. Francisco, it's going to be a turnover. Lafayette come up with the ball. France, they struggled with turnovers a little bit against Canada, and characteristically, all oh, goes coast to coast, no good. But Pashnix is able to pull down the offensive rebound. To be fair to uh, Mustafa Fall, he's not expecting a bounce pass around his knees in no. traffic. No, you got to throw that up. No. However, um, as is Pashnix, just outworked his opp opposite number. He ran. 30 meters he got from baseline to baseline and really kept it alive. He's the release now. Zorix. Ooh, hesitation and no help side defense. Great job there. Maybe miscommunication. No idea where the low eye was. Lapia cutting into that France lead. I don't, I don't think that Cole Francisco is going to get beat on the dribble. I don't think he gets beat often. No. <laughs> that two baseline, easy two point basket for him. Nice uh, little dribble handoff. As Skene now kicks it out. Pass Nix, uh, not really known as a three point shooter, so even if he's open. Ooh, nice little floater is good. They're so like for like, aren't they? Whoever comes in on this Latvian team, very like for like. Skell with a little run up. You know, it's. Uh, they do such a nice job as, as making the right decisions. Now they seem to have worked out the pressure a little bit more than they did in the first quarter. Much more on the dribble than they were the other night. Okobu into the game for France starting this quarter as well. Along with Fal, Batum, Francisco, and Tarpe. So I like this. He definitely is going to his bench a lot more. Kobu. Gonna have to put something up or create something. Spin move, nice, nice defense. And how about that? Almost a tip in, no good. Fight for the rebound is oh, Tarpe, oh. though. Second time he's done that. That's a huge effort on the glass by him. Mustafa Fall taking his time. Tarpe, Francisco at the buzzer, and it's good. So great use of the clock there. Nice inside out. You talked about it. They got to get the ball in the paint, kick it out. Love to go inside. Once the defense collapses, find your shooters. Stroutins gives it up. Zorix waits for the screen. And they're trying to go over top. They tried it against Rudy Gobert. They're trying it against Paul. That's a tough pass. It's also, and I'm, I'm going to make a statement where I can't really back this up by, you know, any sort of like scout or whatever. When has Pashnik ever had to make that cut expecting the alley oop? It's just not something that, as a player in, in at this level anyway, that they've run. They didn't run. Have to run it once the other night. 
Abbott is not a player you see him run a lot in all the qualifiers. The switching is causing them again to go to something they don't want to go to. Kobu. Tough, tough pass. I mean, again, why are you bounce passing it? Zagas. Lots of dribbling, but finds the shooter, and that is no good. There's a lot of possessions by Latvia where their, their ball handler hasn't been the same every time, but they're dribbling the majority of the pre uh, possession. Yeah. And that's that's French did one pass away, and even like the, you see the you get a chance to look at Patum's closeout. Wow, it was it was quick. He had the hand up. Everything that Latvia are doing is being challenged by France. And I was going to say to you after the last one, when they tried to make the bounce pass, there are four Latvian shirts in the keyway. They've got people wide open on the perimeter. And you know, they're shooting the ball very, very yeah. well from three. Kick it, find your shooters. 78% compared to just 21% against Canada for France from the three-point range. And nice defense and another turnover, a block and then a turnover, I think is going to go against France. So Latvia now, they're better when they move and they have set yep. plays and movement. Good defense again, like you said. Oh, nice pick, but no, they're going to call a foul against Okobu. And, and I'll make, I'll just make a comment and an observation on this. Those are the, those, that was the contact that was called at the beginning of the game. It was much tighter, you know. I don't see a foul there. I didn't see a foul earlier in relation to what's being called. And if they're going to call it tight like they did in the first quarter where Latvia ended up in foul trouble, you can't loosen it off now as France are really doing an aggressive job on the ball. You've got to stay with the same type of level. Latvia with a new shot clock now. 14 second shot clock. Good defense, like you said, denying that one pass away. They go inside to Schmitz, and it is going to stay Latvia ball, ball, but they have 1.6 seconds on the shot clock. It's just an incredibly good job by France defensively. On ball, one pass away, nothing easy. Tough, tough shot. They got it off, and they got the offensive rebound. Floor's a little slippery, though. Oh! And the floor is a little bit slippery. You and I saw that. Surely they have to. The, the two players rolled on the floor. They have to. Oh, they're coming, they're coming on. on. You can't see them, but they're coming on. Don't worry. As I believe it was Zagaris hit that big three-point shot after the offensive rebound. Francisco. There you go. Extra pass. Batum. Shot fake. Shot. And it's going to be a foul on the three-point shot as the Latvian fans are not happy. And you see Batum. <laughs> Talking to him, saying, "No, no, no! It was a foul, dude. Nah, trust me, I, I felt you." So that's gonna go against Kurek. Yeah, Lu Luca Benke's asking why that wasn't a foul. The possession before, when they make the three after the first mystery. That's all he's asking. He's not really content. He's not really saying it was or it wasn't. That's a foul. He hit the elbow. Yeah, he hit the elbow when Batum faked, and he went back up. He hit the elbow, whether it's in the act of or on the way down on the fake, neither here nor there, but no different than the one down here. This is all Banky's saying. Yeah. Well, the fans are happy because he missed that one. Yeah. Every Latvian fan Sam would have. Hey, <laughs> can you hear them? <laughs> they're right behind us. Well, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere, I mean, the worry, if you're a French fan now, the worry is you're shooting the ball so well, but Latvia is still hanging around. Are you going to be able to shoot the ball that well for the whole game? Is your defense going to be at this level the whole game? It pretty much has to be to get the win. And when Latvia went 11-0 in those uh, qualifiers, that's what they did. They did. They were relentless, and people just couldn't stay them for the whole 40. Zagers, all the way to the basket. Way to use your body, and that's going to be an M1 foul drawn against Yabusele. How about that? Serious move. That's a serious move. The way he uses his body, watch, he makes that contact happen. And then also prevents the, the block, yeah, exactly, block, right? Yeah. Used his body to create enough space. That was great. Just in case anyone's joined us, we're not in Riga. 
Just so you know, we are in Jakarta. This sounds like the arena in Riga at the moment. If anyone knows how many Latvian basketball fl fans flew out, please let us know because we would like to uh, announce the number because it is actually really incredible. Oh, it's huge. We were told that uh, uh, all of the Latvian t-shirts after the first game were sold out. The t-shirts that you can buy here, the, you know, the World Cup that yep. says Latvia, and they had to print more <laughs> for today's game. Nicolo now back into the game for France. And again, a lot of dribbling by one player. Yabusele just turns around, uses his body, and gets a finish. We go inside. A little bit of a mismatch, not too much. And Kurik's there, no good. Fournier. 15 points in that first quarter with the three. Somehow he scored a three. Uncharacteristic turnover, and what a game. Schmitz is gonna go against Batum. Spins baseline, shot fake, no good. Nice defense there by Nikola Batum. Batum in the corner, his three-point shot, no good. Yabusele, fight, oh, nice breathe there. Throws it off the feet of Kurix, I believe it was. So good heads up play. As you see a, a French fan there, they're definitely outnumbered. Well, we're gonna have a timeout by France. Let's try and listen into uh, what Coach Collet has to say. Well, the great thing, the great thing for Latvia here is they haven't shot the ball as well. France's defense has been really aggressive, yet they're still only six down, and they've, they've, they've hung around, they're competing. Our France, as I said before, are going to be able to be as good as this for 40 minutes. And they were good for 20 minutes against Canada. You know, Gobert set out mo the whole of the second quarter so far, which is in good, but like, there's four to go, surely you want to put him back in. But uh, at the moment, they're doing more than well enough without him. Ducolo draws the foul. It's going to be on the pass. So France ball underneath the basket. Uh, that's a tough call going against Lafayette. I thought that was pretty good defense, moving his feet, had his hands up, but referees sometimes see things that we don't see. Coach Banky agrees with you. Uh, <laughs> 100% from his comment just then. Batum looking to score more tonight, and that's why, as he has six points now, sorry, 10 points. It's just like rolling back the gears for <laughs> Nicolas Batum. We had that monstrous block against Canada, and that reminded me of vintage Batum the other night. And ball is going to stay here as it went off Fournier. I believe that was uh, Razunas who took that shot. Robert Tans is back in. So it's a little bit of a roll of the dice there because he has the two fouls. Yeah. And he's your captain, he's your leader, one of the more experienced players on this Latvian team. I believe he played in all 12 of the qualifiers, correct? Zagas, penetration kick, extra pass, wide open shot! 
And it's good for the captain, Bertans, who just checked into the game. How about that? Absolutely. And, and, and recognition of where he was. The, the, the shot was there, but the man's in the corner. Give him the ball. De Colo, kick, tape. <laughs> Three-point hey. shot. That's his second from that corner. The contribution of that French bench in this uh, in this uh, first half has been a real difference maker for France. And that is going to be his third personal foul by Bertrand. And Tape, good defensive effort there. Wow. Maybe a no call or. Well, I'm. I'm not a referee. Uh, I'll bail out because I can't. Yeah. I, let's just say it's a difficult. Uh, when you roll the dice as a coach and you put the guy and you put Barton, he's on your back captain, in. your leader. Yeah, if you put him back in, he's just made his three and he picks up an, a, a debate, let's say debatable offensive right. foul. Yeah, tough, tough call going against Latvia, but it's a long game. As DiColo might have got away with a walk, just throws the ball out. Nice hustle. And Latvia come up with it. So defensive effort paying off for both teams here. Ooh, Zagas. Oh, Zagas. Oh, great find. Oh, oh, goodness me. What a pass. Zagas to Schmitz. And a nice run there by the big man. 11 points to Schmitz, and he's having a tough game. He's really, again, super pass. Well, Gobert back in the game. Fournier had his feet set. No good. They come up with a rebound. No numbers for Latvia. Grazulis sets the screen. And they leave the ball handler wide open, and they make them pay. So big shot there by Zorix. And we have a timeout for France. Let's try and listen in, because Kole cannot be happy with the last few defensive possessions. Well, why do you want to get it into a timeout? Can they play for 40 minutes that way? Defensively, the answer is no, because for the last two, they've just gone to sleep. Well, that has to be, this play right here has to be a highlight, top time five play, at least from the first half. And it's again, it's what Lavia does to you because then though Nicola would have known he should have really helped, but he's got a wide open shooter on the perimeter, so it, they must have talked a lot about garden shooters. Super pass. Well, Schmitz now already with double figures in this game for Lapia. As France, let's see what they're going to do out of the timeout. Yabuselli gets it down low, goes straight at Schmitz, kicks it out to Tarpe. Tarpe nowhere to go, nice defense. Shot clock's at four, they get it to Fournier. He penetrates, takes his time, takes the contact, no good. Yabusene there to clean up the glass. And a foul is gonna go against Nicolo. As he's talking to the referee, let's see. Just kind of ran in. Maybe a good heads up play there by uh, Kurix, but you know, we've seen some tough call calls go against Latvia, and maybe that was a tough call against France, but like I said, at the end of the day, I do really think in games like this, with a talented crew of referees that we have, it evens out. Pass the ball, you can't pass the ball down low. 
for the or earlier. No space. No, by the time yeah. he made the pass, there was no space. He's almost dropping it. Put it up. Because the help wasn't coming to block, it stayed. It stayed with Smiths. Brazulas gives it up. Zorix. Shot clock. Oh, how about that? What a game that man is having for Latvia. Number 55. Dakota's going to have it outside of moving on to Fournier. Fournier didn't read the help, but again, both ends of the floor, he's getting it done. What a play by number 55 on both oh, ends, oh, and that's what happens. Defense leading to offense, and it's more just the defense intensity, the hustle. Achio Sagas doing it all for Lapia. Leads to a three-point shot by Zorix, and now Fournier trying to quiet this crowd. It's tipped, feet set, and it's good. That's the way you silence a crowd. As coach, you see how disappointed he is. Luca Banchi is going to call a timeout, and let's try and listen in, but wow, this game has been back and forth. I know it's a four-point lead, and France have been leading the majority of the game, but it doesn't feel like that. And I, I don't want to worry French fans, but it's a little bit like they were against Canada there. They were struggling, 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 and the F48 just ended up open. Living a little bit on the edge, and they're hanging on, and we're only at the half. But like, as we said right throughout this uh, first half, we only know one way to play. They're relentless in how they play, and they've fought themselves back into this game. If they score on the last possession, they'll be one or they're two down. And I, and I just can't see him not scoring. Well, let's see what Latvia can do out of the timeout. They're going to use this game clock and take the last shot, I imagine. Obviously had the shooter in. That man right there, he has his feet set. He gets it off. It's no good. And that, folks, is going to be the end of a great first half. Wow is all I can say. France up on Latvia at halftime, 53 to 49. Wow, we're gonna get a look at some stats on both teams. They're phenomenal numbers for a game at this level under this much pressure. Both teams shooting the ball really well. France with 15 assists, more than they had in the whole game the other night. Smith's with 11, Fournier's had a, a massive first half, but for me, Batum has like, rolled back the years. Yeah. Both ends of the floor, just been tremendous. Gonna get a look at some of the best plays of this uh, of that first half. But this not, before we get into those, let's not forget, Labrie have had to play most of that first half without their captain, without, uh, Darius Bertrands, when he was out there, he was making shots. He picked up that third foul offensively. If you're France, you're a little bit worried about that last two minutes. You lost your way defensively, even the last play. Even though Davis uh, Bertrands missed it. Wide open look, end of the game, you know where it's going to go. Smiths has 11 and Fournier has 18. Both have been exceptional in that first half, leading their team from the offensive end. Can Fournier do what he did? Is he going to do what he did in the, in the first game and go quiet in the second half? Or is he going to be able to put a whole half together? Don't forget, he hasn't played a lot of minutes across the season. 
Can he put the whole game together? Well, we'll find out. Uh, and you know, 18 of those points for Fournier, 15 actually came in the first quarter. He sat a lot of the second quarter yeah. though, and France is still up by by four. So, you know, maybe Cole noticed, all right, I played him 20 minutes the other day against Canada. It was a little bit too much in the first half for him and you know wanted to go and rest him a little bit more he ended up playing 16 minutes in the first half so 18 points in 16 minutes is really good yep. you said it i think nicola batum you know he he first shot of the game was for him and i think that's a great thing because we didn't sh see him shoot until the last uh, last quarter against canada it, they were kind of desperation shots and, and what I like is that Cole has gone to his bench, and I think those people have been productive in San Francisco and Terry Tarpe for France, along with a few others. And Lapia, you mentioned it, uh, Dairis Bertrand's the captain. When he's been on, he's been good, but he's only been able to play six minutes, three, three fouls, one of those fouls, kind of tough. Well, it is halftime here in Jakarta, and what a game do we have for you. France leading Latvia 53 to 49, and we will be back for second half action. gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. That's off score for the NBA G League Alley Oh my goodness gracious! Manila. What a way to start here from South Sudan. Almost comes up and Mula goes up. Oh! The Ruba from the weak side just again defends the ring. Thiago pushes, comes off the ball screen in transition. Through his legs, a little bit of showtime for two is good. And welcome to the World Cup party, Brazil. Uh, great job, nice start. He played in 10 games for for Brazil during the qualifiers for them to make it to this tournament, averaging just under 15 points. Abbas had a look, doesn't score. Except the comfort. Drives in. Are you kidding me? And one. What a shot. Execution. Zaze back to her feet. In this place is exploding. Toko, Shangelia. Well, it's a nice finish, but again, it's that man, Sin Zaze, setting it up. Good call. Gets Shangelia. Yes, <laughs> into the lane behind the back oh what a throw down and you can see coach Demir do I take the time out do I not 10-4 start for Brazil it's all been at the ring one more I will let it fly from wow Well, that's 
symbolic of the shooting we've seen from Venezuela this first half. From the three-point line, 12 of 25 in the three-quarter. Leg bomb, nothing but net. That is unbelievable. These guys will be legends in their own country, but also in the international basketball world forever. Well, it is halftime here in Jakarta and France with a slight lead over Latvia, 53 to 49. Mark, we were talking about it at halftime. What quality basketball this is on both ends of the court for both teams. Yeah, well, it was quality anyway. You're both, as you say, we're both. And we were given, like, we were questioning Belsol Cole a little bit about the use of the bench in that first game. In this second game, Tape and uh, coming off the bench early was Francisco. They have been absolutely fundamental to this lead they have. Could have been a bit bigger. Yeah, Fournier has the points, 18 points, but the defensive effort that France put in for most of that first half was exceptional and really did generate points out of their defense. I mean, on the other side, I just can't say enough great things about the way Lavia just, as a group, just believe because Without Bertrand's in the game at all, almost six minutes he played, they fought back from an eight, nine point deficit.
first offense, two sides. Okay? Come on, let go. Well, that man taking selfies with fans, I imagine. And what about, you know, probably the disappointment, and that's why he is here eating an apple and not in a Latvian jersey. Sorry, uh, uh, Porzingis. Well, I, I, this is what it means for him also. Yeah. And Latvia, he is not able to play, but he is still here. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it does mean, and also we saw Janis Strelnik, one of the like, stalwarts of the Latvian team, also injured, but also here. Yeah. It, is, it has real meaning for those guys. And there's not, it must be a frustrated pausing is over there. But you know what? It looked like he still believed this team was going to come through. Well, it's second half action here in Jakarta. France leaving, leading Latvia 53 to 49. There you see it. Batum, Yabusele, Fournier, De Colo, and Gobert, their normal starting lineup. And hustle play almost leads to a steal. But ball will stay France. There is six seconds, I believe. No, the eight, referee is eight, eight, eight. Eight, eight, yeah. OK. Nice read there by Schmidt. So he's done it on the offensive end, but he's also doing it on the defensive end. Oh, they're saying 10 seconds? It was eight seconds. When the ball went out of bounds, it was eight seconds on it. And the official went over and said eight, yeah. He's gonna get it to eight at some point. There you go. Smith's never had control of the ball, so they sh it yep. should be where it was. Going against Schmitz, using his weight, a little turnaround, Ooh. fade away. Nice shot by the big man. Sweet, sweet move. And the foul trouble means they're not going to start Bertrands. No, yeah, I noticed that. So the lineup for Latvia, they're missing their car, uh, par uh, partner, sorry, captain, Zorix. Able to recover, he's gonna let it fly though, and he does, and that's off the mark, so good defensive possession. Ticolo now pushing the tempo. And they're gonna go right back into Yabusele. This time Fournier, big first half. Big first quarter, actually, and a nice start for him in the second uh, half here. Fournier, 21 points. Oh, nice extra pass. Schmidt's feet set, and his three-point shot is good. They just don't quit doing what they do, do they? Great penetration. Help finally came, just kicked it to a wide open shooter. Nice high low look, Yabusele, nice little reverse screen. It's perfect basketball. It was. Schmidt had to front him, right? Yeah. And the difference in the whole thing was that Rudy Gobert, who's used to making that pass, Yabusele sealed off really nicely. They got, they got that, they timed it, they waited. Great execution by France. You've got to say, they've been perfect offensively on the first three possessions. Open inside look. Yabaselli gets his turnaround jumper. It's a really sweet start for the, for the French. Well, Yabaselli going to the free throw line. And that shot's good. I mean, he's pretty much a 70% free throw shooter across the season. It's not bad for a big guy. And it looks a pretty decent stroke. Yeah. As he goes 2-2 two two from the line. France now up 8. Nice start for them. Zorix. Off the front of the rim. 
How long does Luca Banki say, I'm going to wait for Bertrand? Yeah. You don't want to wait. Bertrand. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to wait and wait and wait, and then he's trying to force you back in the game. Double team came this time, and Yabusele picks it up. Well, he can do it inside, and he can do it outside. But a foul away from the ball is going to be called. The three-point shot is good. And Yabusele doing it everywhere on the court in this third quarter for France. But I think a foul is going against Rudy Gobert away hear. from the ball. Yeah. Away, I like The shot counts. Don't worry about that, folks. But on the rebound. Yeah, literally just shoved on the offensive glass. That's a double-digit lead now. They couldn't have started this uh, quarter any better. They've been perfect from the field in terms of on every possession. And, and Nicola Batu rolls back the years again. Oh, how about that, Reed? Nice drop there. Nice finish by Grazulis. Super pass, right? Yeah, great Super pass. pass. I mean, really, for me, Zagas has kind of been the game changer, the difference maker for this Latvian team. Maybe not popping out statistically, but if you saw everything that he's doing, it's absolutely incredible. Well, it's been working, so why not stay with what works? That time, Yabusele misses. Extra pass, feet set, no good. Ball's tipped out, it's gonna stay with Lafia. Schmidt, Grazulis, and nice patience for Lafia. Just lifted out of the help block, didn't he? And the help had to stay. Again, it's a great read. Oh, this is what I was talking about, and that's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. It is the, the energy, the desire, I should say, that that man is playing with. Arthur Zagas tonight, he has been great for them. Only scored four points in their game for them the other day. Well, he's going to get to go to the free throw line for two, and then Lafia will get the ball back because it is an unsportsmanlike foul. And nothing intentional about it, but it was, I mean, it stopped the fast break. It stopped an easy two-point basket. Yeah, so not an action, so if he makes two and they score from the possession, what, what do I know? I'm saying it's a worrying situation. France are up double digits, etc. They could close this now to a four, five-point game, be right back in it, Lafia. Eight points, four assists for that man. Oh, for two. I wouldn't have, there's no way that uh, I was uh, looking at that. Expecting he's a, that. Uh, he's a 70, but again, he's a 75% shooter across the season last year in Lithuania. Well, France get lucky. Foul before the shot, Ooh. no basket. It's gonna be on the ground. You thought it should have been a shooting foul? He got fouled as he pivoted away and went up. Well. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Here we go, we will. Has it fouled on the way up? I don't know. <laughs> I think the foul is there. Yeah, yeah, if they call the foul there, then it's before he turns. Well, Lapia with the ball back, that foul's gonna go against uh, Fournier. They've got, it's important they score now. They've had plenty of opportunities with the ball this time to eat into the lead. Ooh, Zagger, step back, three-point shot, it's good! Against Nicolas, Nicolas Batu, excuse me. What a game he is having. 25 years old, welcome to the World Cup. Rudy Gobert, spin move. And foul is called. Latvian fans don't like it because it was a little late. 
But the referees are, are doing that now. I remember uh, uh, back at the Women's World Cup, there were a lot of fouls. They kind of waited to see if it was a foul or uh, if the basket went in or not. But it's a foul or not, right? Well, you know what? There's a reason why we're here and they're there. I know, I know. <laughs> and they I know make that. the big bucks and... Amen. Rudy Gobert has looked very, very secure on the three-point line tonight. He's only a 65, 64% free throw shooter across the NBA season last year. But he's looked very secure. And there's still no Bertrands. Neither. Neither. Yeah, exactly. That shot off the rim, Gobert pulls it down, and there you saw Francis free throw shooting. Much better job tonight than they did against Canada. Same with their free th uh, three point shooting, as they're at 75%. They were just 21% against Canada the other night in their 30 point defeat. Miscommunication, that's going to be a turnover. Well, you know, one thing it shows that uh, Coach Banky has a lot of faith in this lineup and its depth. Yeah. You know, and it's the, if they score on this possession, they're right back to where they were at the half. And a couple missed opportunities. I yeah. mean, we saw those two free throws went 0 for 2 after that unsportsmanlike foul. Weren't able to score, even though uh, they drew a foul and they got the ball back on the sideline. So I think Lapia, they got to feel better, good if you're only down six. They go inside for the big man, kicks it out to the hot hand. He's going to let it fly. That one's no good. And shot clock violation. So great defensive possession there by France. Well, Francisco was a real difference maker in the first half. Nicolas Batum and Tape coming back in together. It's, this is where France really turned up the heat defensively with these two on the floor. But Francisco going against uh, Zagas at the moment, and there's, if there's anyone in the river with the game, it's him. <laughs> Francisco gets it up, gets it back. Ooh, almost turnover. Calls over Gobert. They switch it, they gotta let it fly, they do! Oh! Sylvain Francisco says, maybe you should have played me a little bit more against Canada. Big time shot by him off the bench. Zagas. Yabusele out denying Schmitz far away from the basket. Ah, big man needs to roll. And it might be a turnover. Tape read it though. You know, really quick gets in the lane. Fournier, nice little hang time as he easily gets to the basket. That's back out to 11. Banke's going to call the timeout, Shona, and when do the Bertrands come back? And there you see Fournier's nice little move. Well, let's listen in on this timeout. on the sets. Set good screen and roll at the basket. Okay? He cannot control such a passes. We enter and we find open trees on the perimeter. Okay? First open. Scrape. We advance to Iger. To Iger. Well, he's waiting no longer for uh, for one of the Bertans to come back. Davis comes in. 
This is where they rotate Smiths out in the down 11. That's how much faith Coach Banky has in his lineup. He'll rotate arguably his most effective player. But he brings in Bertans. He had to, right? Yeah, I had to. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, the other brother check into the game, Skele. Thought about it, nothing. Maybe should have shot it. They just throw it up. Nice defense by who other than Tarpe. He's been absolutely phenomenal at both ends of the floor, Terry Tarpe. As has anyone who's come off that bench. The bench has been absolutely crucial to France this evening. Terry Tarpe, six points, five boards, two steals to go along with two assists, doing a little bit of everything, but it's it's some of the non-statistics. Oh, deep three-point shot with about the house down. No good there by uh, Bertrand, Tarpe, Yabusele. Not maybe the greatest shot decision by Yabusele. And they're going to say it was last touch by White, so Lafia ball. Yeah, I think it's right. They can challenge it if they want, obviously, but I think it's right. I also don't think it's obvious enough to challenge it, but they're going to challenge it. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay, let's listen in. At least we'll get the explanation. Well, we'll get to see it as well. I'm pretty sure that Francisco was the last, it came off him, it was one of those fumble it out, fumble it out your fingers type stuff, and he, he, he tried to recover it. So, Okay, we are a head coach challenge for an out-of-bound situation. Go back. Go. 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 So we got... 14 seconds. Yes. In the... In the no, backcourt, 24 back seconds. Yes, 24 go for seconds, red. Right. Okay, after review, the out-of-bounds is for red ball. Backcourt with 24 seconds on the shot clock. Yes, sir. See, the thing is about a coaching challenge, you can't, you know, it's for the out of bounds. Who was it last touched by? You can't then go and say, oh yeah, maybe I missed a foul. That's not how the coaching challenges work. You know, you can, you can use a challenge if you know, uh, over and back, if you think it was an over and back and a stop play, a ball out of bounds, if you thought, you know, you, the other team was the last team to touch it, you can use it to upgrade a foul, I believe. Yeah. But, you know, well, hey, sure, yeah. all the French fans are saying, yeah, but it was a foul, but that's not what a coaching challenge can be used for. <laughs> what it's done, that break has enabled them to get Schmitz back in the game a lot sooner than they probably thought they would. Zorix goes up against Gobert, Gobert. Defensive player of the year in the NBA three times. And that is a big reason why he's able to get the block and then it actually touches Zorix. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Buscele likes that spot on the floor as he Jeez. just muscled his way in. He just bullied Bertrand. He did. <laughs> just bullied him deep. Zorix left wide open, miscommunication defensively, and Lafia makes them pay as they desperately needed that three-point. I was just about to say, Zorix in particular needed to get one to go. He's, he's struggled a little bit off the dribble. They're loving this uh, post-up with Yabuselli. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Why would you? He had... He has 16 points in the game, sorry, 18 points. He had nine points at halftime. And all, other than that three-point sh shot he made, which was from the same area, he was there, and then he just popped out because of a baseline penetration. They've all come from right in front of us, this side of the court. That's where he wants to be, and that's where they want to get him the ball. As we see Gobert go to the bench. 
probably to somewhere in the fourth quarter. Carpe. Tough pass. No good. And Lapia just turned the ball over. Unfortunate situation. Minute 18 seconds, maybe just, you know, calm down a little bit, run a good offense, cut into this lead, 10 point lead, minute 18 left in the third quarter. Pay. Gets it up to Fournier. Fournier. Tough, tough, tough oh, shot. <laughs> France have gone very dribble and post up focused, haven't they? It's Yabaselli or Francisco or Fournier, whoever has it, wants to do it on the dribble, and at the moment they're making tough shots. Tough shots. The officials are allowing a little bit of, uh, let's just say, conversation <laughs> as this game gets a little bit chippy. Oh, there's a lot on the line. If Latvia wins, makes things very uncomfortable. Zorik's shot off, fight for the rebound. Latvia come up with it. Extra pass. Skele, oh, front iron, but they get the ball again, and maybe Maybe Kurtz had a little bit more time yeah. than that to shoot, but a couple good looks for Lapia, and they're just not able to score. Just the other reason, they've had good looks. They've had a lot of good looks this third quarter. At some point, I know it's a gamble, and I know it's you know, when you throw the dice, but uh, Arias Bertrand still sits, and he's going to bank. Banky's made that decision to, to literally try and get through the third without him. Francisco says he wants it. No good, almost a turnover, but Fournier is gonna be called for a foul. They have one to give, so. Is that Fournier's third, though? It is Fournier's third personal foul. So not quite as good a foul as, no. uh, as it could have been. And 2.5 seconds left. Oh, he was open. Well, France are going to get the ball back on this end of the court because no one touched it. Kurix was open and he stopped. He actually went back door and uh, they saw the pass and he stopped. So now they're going to well, they, They're going to have a good opportunity Seriously, to score here. Yeah, really. They get it to Fournier. No, they don't. Nice defense. Uh, I'm not sure what it counted. Very Had tight. Had it gone in, it would have been tight. Well, that is it after three quarters. A big third quarter for France as they lead 74 to 62 over Latvia. They outscored Latvia in that quarter 21 to 13. Well, let's just again make the point no Bertrands for the whole quarter. And they're now, okay, you had, they look at the numbers. That'd be a dropping to 43. Still impressive by most people's standards with 68% from the three point line for France. That and their defensive impact from the bench has been phenomenal. And they went to this post up so often yeah. in, the, uh, in that third quarter, whether Yabaseli put it up himself or whether they went inside outside. No reason to change it because it wasn't broken. And Yabaselli made great decisions, scoring himself or kicking it. It doesn't feel like a 12-point game. They've got back to four or five on a number of occasions. That be a, and they're never out of it because they can make threes in a real hurry. France have now just got to close this out. Defensively, if they stay with the way they played their defense, the one pass away pressure, then they should be able to close this out with a 12-point lead. 
but you can never write off a Latvian team that don't forget went 11 and 1 in the qualifiers. You can never write off a Latvian team and you can never write off a, a good three point shooting team because it means that they can shoot and get a lot of points in a short amount of time. I do think uh, uh, that is Bertrand, the, the captain, three fouls. When he went out, we you saw him go to the end of the bench. I don't know if he's injured, because I think it's a little odd that he didn't play any minutes in that third quarter, even though he does have three fouls. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I can only think he's still not cut aside. I can only assume he's hurt then, because he's, uh, he's still down the wrong end. He's still down the wrong end of the bench. Right. He's not done. We haven't had a camera shot of him for a while, for a long time. So I think they're going to have to do it without him. Then his brother's going to have to step up, and Smith is going to have to get some looks. Well, you said it. They're trailing by 12. Let's see what they can get on this first possession. Bertrands, Zagas. He's had an amazing, amazing game for Latvia. And that might have been goaltending. And it was. I think he touched it before it hit the backboard. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Easy call. If they hadn't used the coach's challenge, they could have challenged it. <laughs> oh, I, I still, I think they would have lost the and challenge anyway. They would have lost, they'd have lost <laughs> that as well. So two points for Latvia. They got to get a couple stops in a row here. Make themselves feel good, get in a comfortable single-digit lead. Yabuselli shot fake, penetrates. And turns it over, though, so nice help. Defense, Bertrand's bad pass. Kind of held on to it a little bit too long instead of just making that extra pass in the corner as he went to help his teammate up. While France have the 10, 8, 6 point lead, you think they feel like they still think they're in control of this, and they probably are. That we just need to get over the hump. Batum. Not a bad look, and who else was there trying to tip it out? Tarpe, but no good. Latvia now with numbers. Instead, they pull it out. Zagas, three point shot off the front of the land. Do you think they're starting to maybe get a little bit tired here in this game? Uh, I think that one was more Zagas was second guessed himself. He, he pulled it out. Then he thought, oh, I'm open. Maybe I should shoot the ball. And I don't think he needed to pull it out. I think it could have been a four on three, yeah. five on four situation. And could have got deeper yeah. and then kicked it. Oh, could have taken it himself. Lapia, get it in as Francisco falls, then slips. Schmitz oh. with the throwdown. <laughs> Batum probably should have shot it. And, and Nic Nicola Batum in the first half would have just shot that ball. Yeah. He missed the one before. I don't believe he's going to doubt himself, but maybe overfought that one. Huge possession right now, though. Chance to get it to six or even five. Zagas, nice take, aggressive to the basket. Earns himself a trip to the free throw line. So you said it was a huge possession. He went 0 for 2 on that unsportsmanlike foul, but first we're going to have a timeout by Vincent Collet. It's an interesting timeout for, for Collet here. Let's see what he says. <laughs> Oh, 
How long do you leave Gobert out of the game, though? It was such a factor, not just for his own points or whatever, he just protecting the ring, doing everything the big man should do. There's still 8.15 to go. When does he play that card? Now, he's gone with Colo and uh, Francisco in the backcourt together for the first, pretty much the first time, just to give Fournier a little bit more time on the bench. So he's got the Fournier. In, in the four position, so they're actually they're playing small ball right a now. A real small ball. Against the small Latvian lineup, too. That's 0 for 3. But what is he's a very solid free throw shooter. Hasn't missed a three, hasn't missed a, a two or a three, but can't make a three throw. <laughs> it's only worth one. Just has to make this one. 0 for 4. That's gonna play on his mind. That absolutely he was short on the first attempt and then he was long on the second attempt. So that's all mind game right there. Francisco. A little shake and bake, nowhere to go. He turns it over. So now Lapia. But Tarpe. no, nice, hand, nice hands by Tarpe. And France, Tarpe. And he is going to go to the free throw line. Terry Tarpe is one of the reasons France might win this game. Both ends of the floor, but his defense and just his hustle, unbelievable effort. Hardly played major minutes in the game against Canada. Out there at the sharp end on the free throw line in the fourth quarter for France tonight. So France actually has six people on the court right now. It's amazing what situations do to free throw shooters. The pressure of the moment. I think they're gonna take they can't come on, they can't come on in the middle of a free throw. What? No. They actually had six people on the court, though. But we changed the, the ball was in. We changed the rules now. You can substitute <laughs> after the first free throw. Well, we explained it to the re referee, but not us. And Tarpe makes one of two. Maybe you don't have to panic, do they? There's an eternity left in the game. You just have to remember who they are. Zach Ass. Miss Schmitz. Schmitz has a little bit of an advantage here. They go inside, they find him. Spacing now. A little one-on-one -on -one against Tarpe. He drives baseline, but he stepped out of bounds. So ball back to France. That's turrets. Tarpe, again at the defensive end, has made something happen. Just stayed in stance and forced him out of bounds. Super, super defensive play. He's as big a factor on this game as anyone else, regardless Tarpe. of their points. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, regardless of stats, really. Yeah. If you watch, if you watch the game, you realize how important he has been. Fournier. Shot clock, three-point shot, no good. Schmitz tips it out. Bertrand's, his shot is off. Lafia going a little bit cold in the second half here from the three-point range. Regardless of Nando De Colo's reasons for it, you can't do that. <laughs> well, you just can't. Go, go, go. Let's see what the referees are going to say about it. Kurix fouled him, and it was one of those fouls you hate. Can they go and review this? They can do. Because he raised, it's a, it's, it's, it's a nothing raising of the hands, but he raised his hands right. and stuff, so he can look at it, but. And he'd already made the foul. It wasn't, it, yeah. was, it was one of those things that, you know, you, you've been a player, you hate that yeah. type of contact. Yeah. And he didn't let go of it either. But, see like here, they're all locked. 
So the whistle's now gone. And Bertrand did the best job, and he made it. He made it a real big deal. Well, Decolo is going to get called for a personal foul. Sorry, an unsportsmanlike. Is it an unsportsmanlike? Because yeah. if it is, he's kicked out of the game. It's, it's either. A, uh, if it's violent enough, it was, he hasn't had what, an unsportsmanlike. Oh, yeah, yeah he he's did. gone. He he's had gone. one in the first half. Yeah, he's gone. He's got to go to the locker room, yeah. correct? Yeah, absolutely has to go to the locker room. Well, you hear him. I don't see the. I don't think the officials have any alternative. However minor the actual contact were. But he's got to go, and if he doesn't go, it could make the whole situation worse. And, and uh, France are going to bring in uh, that coordinator who hasn't played. So he gets his first minutes with 6.46 to go, and the game on the line, and then Dodocolo has to leave for two unsportsmanlike yep. fouls. Yep. That's why we see him walking out of the gym to the locker room right now. Simply has to make the throws. That's a huge, a huge moment. This could be a game changer. Oh, a momentum changer, oh, I guess huge. you could say. As uh, uh, Kurtz there knocks down both of his shots. So they make two. They could cut this to a four point lead. Cordigne into the game for France. He replaces Nando Bidicolo, who checked out of the game. Zagars. Foul. And reaching foul going against uh, Le Sort, who has not played. Uh, Big, big minutes for this French team this game compared okay. to uh, what he did against Canada. He's in there spelling the Yabuselli before Yabuselli comes back. Lasol's going to go out now because Gobert's going to come in for the last six and a half of the game. And that's another little mental breakdown deep on the shot clock. You don't need to reach. And Zagas, who went 0 for 4 um, on his previous. Was it Zagas? Mm -hmm. Zagas is the one Zag who went. Zagas went 0 for, 0 0 for 4. 4 yeah. yeah. Well, it's 1 of 2 one. that time. Yeah. Not great free throw shooting yeah. for, for 2 of 7 in the game. If they lose this, you know he's going to look back and yeah. uh, be very, very frustrated. But the thing is, he's been a game changer for them. Absolutely. And he's played exceptionally well. They're looking to go inside to Gobert, and they do, and Gobert is going to say, Wow, it's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. They're saying they didn't make a play on the ball and maybe a little bit uh, too much contact, I, too I, aggressive. I don't. I, I, it's not a play on the ball. I, I, it's, to me, it's an unsportsmanlike foul. There's no way he's making a play on the ball. It was more the, the yeah. last action. Yeah. Like you hit him, and then after you grabbed him. But I mean, they called an unsportsmanlike on Nando Decolo. You have to call it the same yeah. both ways. They absolutely have to call it both ways. I just wish they would always call those non-plays on the ball right. as unsportsmanlike, and then we're all okay, but absolutely not. That's an unsportsmanlike foul. Well, Gobert knocks his first one down, puts France up. Gobert's had a really, and I've said it earlier, from the line, he's been incredibly solid. Sometimes yeah, you doubt him a little bit from the line, not tonight, he's not looked like he's gonna miss anything. It's just really solid performance and again Latvia just can't get over the six seven point hump just need a stop yeah. and a score and another stop but you still feel France even with the Dakota scenario still in control Francisco deep three-point shot no good so ball is gonna go back to Latvia not sure that was the best shot that France could have got out of that action. I think a few times tonight, maybe Francisco trying to do a little bit too much yep. on his own. 
And maybe would he be in there at the moment with, with if the Colo had to uh, had to leave. Schmitz. No good. Bertrand's there. Ooh, dribbles back. Oh, oh, oh. what a three-point shot. Kind of reminds me of a Ray Allen's shot over the Spurs. <laughs> and Tony Parker running back to the three-point line. Wow, that was a big shot. And it's a five-point game. And Hustle, who wants it more? Lafia does. And Cordigne is going to be called for the foul. Well, Smith is going to go this. to the bench. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was well, uh, well challenged by Batum as well. Smith is on the bench. I can't believe he's going to be there for more than a minute or so. Grazunas. Oh, nice pass. Easy basket for Lafia. And Vincent Collet wants to talk about what he sees as it has become a one possession game with five minutes left in this fourth quarter. Four, fourth quarter. And you hear the fans. They've been on their feet all game long, but now they're even a little louder. Let's listen in. Well, Przingis, he's smiling. Uh, Fournier back in the game for France. They still have Francisco at the point. Where did they go? You'd love to see Gorbea get a touch, regardless of where it ends up. You want the ball to go to Gorbea and then kick it back out. Francisco's got to spend less time dribbling the ball because of the people on the floor. I mean, you got to get it to your scor uh, scorers. I think Fournier yeah, exactly. has to take a shot near yeah. the end of a shot clock. Well, Francisco is the last scoring option they have on the right, floor. Right, you have Batum, Gobert, you have Buscelli. Let's not forget his third quarter, and he hasn't touched the ball in this exactly. fourth quarter or had a good look in this fourth quarter. Well, his three-point shot off the back of the rim. And Lafia for a chance to tie it. Oh, ho, ho, what a block. Well, Gobert says, not in my house. Look at this. He tried to, <laughs> he tried to use the ring to protect, but he just didn't get far enough around. There's still plenty of time on the on the possession, still a 10 second set. Well, France have been leading this entire game. Lapia can tie it. Oh, they're down one. And what a game, Zagas. And you can feel the tension, but you know what? Batu, I was just about to say, France have been in this position before. Latvia have never been in this kind of a position at a World Cup. France have. As the veteran steps up and nails a three-point shot. Zagas! Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a response! 21 points! for number 55 from Lafia. Francisco, great take. Nice pass inside. 
They just don't know how to be anything else but Latvia. And the referee is going to blow a whistle as uh, he hit the uh, hit the hit the base of the basket. And it oh, rolled. he did. Yeah. His foot. Yeah, I think so. It's number double zero, Rodion's Kurups. There we go. We're going to see it. There, yeah, see, like he's going to come and he keeps coming and he just rolls his ankle as he hits the back. Don't think it's that bad. No. But Smith's is going to come back, so works out well. Well, Kurux, he's up and walking, and he's going to go to the bench. But like you said, he gets to, Schmitz gets to come in and take him off. And you know, Kurux, he's done a great job for them. He's been playing well, but at least you get to bring another uh, big time player in off your bench if you're uh, Coach uh, Banchi. They've just got to contain the ball now and force France to make a play, not give him too much on the dribble. Great oh, nice pass. Oh. Easy two point shot. Great, great pass by Sylvain Francisco to Rudy Gobert. Zagas almost turns it over. They get a shot off Batum now. You see Kole saying, whoa, whoa, slow it down. Hold on, let's use a little bit of the clock. Let's run an offense. They're up three with just under three minutes. Schmitz. They're looking for Gobert. And I believe that foul is going to go against Aftos Kurix, number 47. He did what you'd ask him to do, really. He's all over Fournier. And then he just got pushed off and hard tried to hold on. So That's going to be his fifth team foul. So he's going to have to go to the bench. And I do think that uh, uh, the captain, uh, Dairis must uh, Bertrands, must be hurt. There's no reason he hasn't played in this second half. Zagas, Francisco, Yabusele. Sloppy offense, but they still have control oh. of the ball, and they get it to that man. Oh, somehow it goes out. Gobert tips it out, so they're going to have a new shot clock. Francisco. And Gobert almost with another tip out. Schmitz underneath, oh, he was alone. He was alone and I think could have gone up. And it, it, so, talk to me a little bit about what you thought about that last possession by uh, Silver Francisco, that shot. Well. They switched, you have Gobert yeah, with a no, mismatch, you say yeah, go get the rebound, big yeah, man. Yeah, at the end of the day, where they were on the shot clock okay. wasn't a bad look, and, and they had good looks, good shot opportunities on the offensive glass. It was more that they took so long, I think, to get to that point. Right. And, and Gobert, they, they could have got it, they, I still think, get it to it, like they did on the roll pass, where he just got the easy two. Get it in, if they make that adjustment, Gobert will get it back to someone. Well, let's... And, and he's not their first, can't be their first okay. option, friend, unless he gets to the ring. Let's take a listen to Banky. Well, both Latvia and France have, are going to be in the bonus on their next foul committed, and each team has a timeout, and you saw the coaches' challenges. Latvia has a coaches' challenge left, as France do not, as the French fans look a little bit nervous. So do the Latvian fans. Well, Coach Benke asked for, asked for them to run that Spanish action out of bounds. Whoever sets the screen could end up wide open as they come back off the next pick. It's um, and that is just going to go. They got to get the ball in. Yeah, they do. Bertrands is left open. His three-point shot off the mark. Fight for the rebound. Gobert skies for that rebound. Should that was good luck. Take the first one though. On the out of bound, give and go. Take yeah. the two. But that's not Latvia, so. No. And it was a wide open look. Yeah. 
by your three-point shooter. Gobert has a mismatch. Batum can't hold on to it. Zagas. They got time. They don't need a three. You just need a score. Good look at the basket. Zorix gets it back. And that's yeah, that's, a, that's, that's an a easy call for the referee and that far away from the basket. So it's going to be uh, Davis Bertrand going to the free throw line for Latvia with a chance to cut this lead to one. Minute 32 left and just an easy call as uh, Porzingis likes what he sees. How did France not just catch it and just drop it towards Gobert? He had a massive advantage on the inside. Yeah, I think uh, Batum was thinking about the pass before, before he, he caught the ball. The ball. Yeah. You've got to feel it's just one more stop for Latvia, just to get them in the lead. France just want to keep it ticking over. Rubet Go Gobert needs the ball. Yeah. Fournier, shot clock's at seven. They switch again. Fournier all the way to the basket, loses the ball, but the referee is going to call a blocking foul going against Latvia, so Fournier is going to go to the free throw line, and he is an excellent free throw shooter. We'll get a replay here. Tough call this late in the game, but I think it's the right call. Again, it's one of those ones where I'm not sure which of the officials should have caught it because the lead official on the baseline didn't. And it's one of those. You can look for it. It's no point looking at all those previous calls, which were similar either. Smart move by Cole Lalo. The man who's really, whose defensive effort has really put France in this position, Terry Tarpe, coming back into the game. He's had an excellent, excellent game, especially on the defensive end. Tips, reflections. Fournier makes the first of two. As you see the captain there, nervous faces. And France back up by three. Lots of time left though. Both teams in bonus. Something to think about. Maybe if your Latvia Schmitz penetrates, gets all the way to the basket. Nice drive. You don't need a three. There's still no. so much time left. I think that was a good play. That was a good decision. He could have maybe shot the three. Just got to back the defense. As we said, one stop, in, and that might do it for Latvia. Fournier. You know he's going to take the last shot. And that is off. And Gobert is going to be called for an offensive uh, rebounding foul. That's gross. And that is going to be his fourth personal. A loose ball foul, so Latvia will walk the floor to shoot the pros. 27. Well, Schmitz here could possibly give Latvia their first lead of the game. He's asked to do a better job than everybody else has, though, from the free throw line for Latvia. He ties the game for Latvia. Cole has one timeout left. Not sure if he'll use it. And Latvia have the first lead of the game with 37.7 seconds left. And Vincent Cole says, no, I want to use my timeout now. Oh my goodness, folks. France leaving, leading for 39 minutes, more than 39 minutes of this game. And Latvia now with a one point lead. Let's listen in.
Jeu à deux entre tous les deux. Si ça switch sur le jeu à deux. Gershon, il vient poster, Rudy, il faut que tu montes ici. Tu peux faire un flair à l'opposé. Non, non, il a fait pas vite en l'air. T'as entendu Là, il y a un flair pour Sylvain. Donc tu peux effectivement jouer Gershon en relation. Et tu peux jouer aussi de l'autre côté. Et pénétrer, bien sûr. Il faut qu'on ait de la vitesse pour aller chercher la pause. Let's go allez, 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 allez. Well, Coach Collet drew up a set play, talked about if they switch, talked about if they trap. And let's see what France are going to get out of this timeout. There's a lot of time left. I, I know it's only 37.7 seconds, but... He's going to take it in the front court. It's going to go 14 seconds. Yeah. As long as, if, if, as, long, as, long as Latvia get the rebound off round score that will have a full 24. Yeah and they have a timeout left as a well. Timeout and a full 24 to win the game. The stop will probably do it for him. Yeah Buscelli gets the ball and trying to get it to Francisco. Good job there Ooh. by Zagas. So six seconds, five seconds, Fournier. Nice floater. Tipped. Oh a miss by Gobert. So Latvia, they're up one. France has to foul. And they're not able to foul. There's 14.2 seconds. Latvia are going to have the ball. Not sure if Fanchi is going to use a timeout or not. No, he's going he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna to trust his players. He doesn't want to give Kole the opportunity to right, organize to stuff. Yeah, you're right. They've got to get it. Once they get it in. Well, then... this is the game clock. They get it in. They have to foul. They don't. Time is running out. And Fournier does foul with 10 seconds left. The good thing is they're actually putting uh, Zagas to the free throw line. Yeah, yeah. And he is Absolutely. only two of seven tonight. You're only down one and then you have 10 seconds left. That's a lot of time to get down the other end of the court. Uh, Zagas. If he can make. It's, big, it's a big time for Zagas now. This if is he, if probably he goes to, the biggest yeah. free throws of his life. Yeah, he makes these two and who went back against him. And he makes the first two of seven going into that. He is now three of eight. And will, if they make the second or three up, will that be a foul? Send France to the line, let's see. And he misses. Batum. It's a two-point game. Fournier. Fournier almost turns it over. Francisco, he has a look. And it's off the rim. And Latvia wins. Latvia makes history. And respect from the French players to the Latvian players. What an incredible game. I am speechless, Mark. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't top what you just said. You just summed it up <laughs> perfectly. I just, we kept saying all they needed was that extra stop. Just get over the hump. They didn't get over the hump until 39 minutes. <laughs> First lead of the game came with 37.7 seconds left. France now, it has become very, very complicated as you see a little bit of a discussion between the two players. There's a lot of experienced guys there. I'm sure they'll sort that out between themselves. But the, the, the most important thing for me, Shona, is that Let's not worry about what's they happening. Don't know. Yeah. That, that's just Latvia, happened. Latvia, go ahead and celebrate. You deserve to celebrate, exactly. boys. And the most important thing about that is they won being Latvia, right? There was stuff that didn't go for them. They didn't go away from what they uh, they do. Smiths made shots. Bertans made shots. And they did it without their captain. That's a tremendous, unbelievable performance by a Latvian team that just underlined their qualification. <laughs> 88, 86, they're the only two numbers that matter. <laughs> Absolutely, only two numbers. Who cares about numbers. everything else? Sagar's had 22 points and uh. Smith's 20. That's massive <laughs> for those two. But it was a team win. It was an absolute team win for Latvia.
and, and how proud they must feel right now and all the effort. And I love that they got to do this in front of this many Latvian wow. fans. Yeah, if those guys make the effort, that's how much it means to Porzingis as well. We saw him a few times during that fourth quarter. And this fourth quarter in particular, it was just, they would not be denied. They, they've done the hard work. They've got here as one of the hot first qualification teams. They just would not stop being Latvia, regardless of Bertrand's not being in the game. You just have to. And you can talk all sorts of technical things at the end of the day, but their belief in each other was ridiculously there for everybody to see. This is the biggest win oh. in Latvian basketball history, folks. They are going to finish second in group, most likely. I mean, well, they have a group deciding game. Oh, no, now game. they have a deciding game. They could, for sure, they're moving on. Let's say that. Oh, no, they're they're going to finish first on. or second, and yeah, they're yeah. going to give themselves a chance to play in the quarterfinals. And wow, Latvian history made here today in Jakarta at this year's FIBA Basketball World Cup. An absolutely amazing game. They struggled in that third quarter. You kind of thought maybe that was it. France is just going to pull away. They're way too experienced to, to, to let Latvia come back. They were down heading into the fourth quarter. They dug down, outscored France 26 to 12. They got their first lead of the game with 37.7 seconds left. And they held on for a two point win. You know, you're right in everything. People will talk about the Decolo unsportsmanlike ejection. They'll talk about a number of things, but so many things happened in that game. So many things. You can look at individual parts of it. But that this guy, Zagars in particular, just would not be denied the win. He got it where he needed it, and he struggled from the free throw line like crazy. Just a tremendous performance. What a day here. There you see it, Canada 2-0, Latvia 2-0, France 0-2, Lebanon 0-2. Wow, those are today's games. France losing to Latvia tonight, 86-88. to That is Group H action here from Jakarta, Indonesia. Thanks for joining in and see you tomorrow.